Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, while many businesses know that they should be focusing on the digital aspects of their businesses, some only have a basic digital plan and operation, while others have no plan at all. My next guest, Garvin Callan, has written a new book about creating digital strategies which deliver results, and he joins us now to tell us more. Garvin, we'll be discussing your book, Digital Business Strategy, How to Design, Build and Future-Proof a Business in the Digital Age. But first, I'd like to get an insight into your own background. Great. Well, Carl, listen, thank you very much for having me on. Delighted. I have my own advisory practice called 101. What I do, you know, in a nutshell is every day I work with boards, I work with leaders of businesses large and small, so from SMEs right up to uh, the biggest brands that you'll know of in Ireland and indeed many others in the in, in Europe. And um, what I do is help them, what we call do strategy, but a really simple level. It's help them have a look at where they are. Also, kind of look at the world around them and see what's happening, what's influencing, not just where they are and how things are going, but more importantly, where the future is. And the third the big thing we do as part of that is the execution piece. So figure out how we're going to get to a destination that they, they want to get to. And how would you rate the effectiveness of digital strategies that Irish businesses currently have in place? I think Irish businesses are doing are doing as well as uh, as other uh, countries, as as you know, and as I think we mentioned. Uh, I, I work in Ireland. I work across you know Scandinavia, uh, Germany, Switzerland, a lot of the European countries, and and touch into the the states a little bit as well. I think that Ireland is actually ahead of many uh, countries in terms of digital adoption. So you know, more mobile phones, more internet users. So I think we've got a great base. Of uh, uh, of adopters, if I was to use that that general language, um, and I think organisations are are waking up to that and are executing that that strategy. What I sometimes worry about in Ireland is that uh, that businesses aren't investing in digital skills as much as they have and building the competencies uh, uh, and understanding really how digital can be used to improve the customer experience, make their business more efficient. But I think we have the foundations. Of, uh, of wanting to use because at the very end of the day we're a very entrepreneurial nation and, and uh, we have that culture so uh, we're, we're, not, we're not short on passion uh, but uh, uh, I think we need to spend more time uh, on skills and we need to think about scaling the opportunities. You developed a framework around this called IMPACT. What does that stand for? Yeah, well, I think that the departure point for all of us is to kind of know where we're going. We kind of have to look back a little bit, Carl. And looking back is about understanding what are the drivers of, you know, this fourth and indeed we're in the fifth industrial revolution now. So, you know, we know that there was steam and electricity and then computers were the first, second, third industrial revolutions. The fourth and fifth are not just built on one technology. They're built on an amalgam of technologies. They're kind of the, the combustion and combination of... Of, of impact. So that stands for the internet itself, for mobile phones, which have kind of exploded our way to, to get our get into and consume and, and uh, participate in the internet. But that creates when we digitalize services in that way, that's enabling data to be turned into analytics and intelligence. So, uh, uh, and the P in the middle stands for platforms because they're the mediums through which we're exchanging business now, right? And uh, they're all around us. And that all underneath us has been enabled by cloud technologies. So we've got this amalgam of technologies that are being combined and great innovators are, are using that to really recreate and digitalize and virtualize services and virtualize our businesses. And when we think about it, you know, we think about money, we think about, you know, communications that we're on. Like so many services and so many, you know, propositions have been, you know, digitalized and they've been, been virtualized, which means that they're more accessible, which creates better customer experience. It means that there's a potential to uh, accelerate growth and get access to more global customers. Uh, it means that businesses can automate and use intelligence to be more efficient. There's also the risk factor as well. Many organizations have taken a lot of risk out of their business, which was, you know, analog and kind of, you know, manual in the past, automating that allows for that kind of amalgam of benefits from the amalgam of, of technologies. So with that in mind then, Garvin, what process should a business follow when developing a digital strategy? 
Yeah, well, I think I think strategy as a practice has, has changed, Carl, over the last uh, couple of years. You know, five, seven, ten years ago, we were, you know, I was working with clients who were doing five-year strategies and seven-year strategies, trying to stand in today, look into a point in the future and say, let's go and get it, and then revisit that every couple of years. Today, we... We, I see a thing that I call stradaptability, but it's you know a fancy word for adaptable strategy. And in 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 businesses and organisations I work with, so there's one very large team uh, that I that I work with, and we revisit our strategy every three months. And and that's what I, that's what stradaptability is all about. And that's a process where we kind of follow a fairly simple rhythm. But every three months we kind of come in and we say pause, stop. What's going on? How are we getting on with pursuing delivering value for you know our customers or our uh, our businesses that we're looking after and, and we say how how is that going and we have an honest appraisal the other thing that we do really importantly is we kind of just don't look in and look at the immediate market we looked out and we start to detect what are the new things that are you know shaping the world around us and generative ai chat gpt is probably the one big thing in practices like this where we're kind of doing a stop pause right that's interesting that's becoming a big thing let's try and understand it and let's see where and how we can use that in our strategy in the next cycle of three months. So there's this kind of discover and detect phase that starts at the start. So look close and look far and see how we need to recalibrate the environment that we're in and therefore select and decide on what direction we're going in. And of course, there is immense hype around these artificial intelligence bots such as ChatGPT and of course X have launched one themselves over the last couple of weeks. But when it comes to AI, many SME owners are wondering, is this really relevant to me? So Garvin, have you any case study examples you can share with us where you've worked with an SME to integrate something like ChatGPT into their business yeah, yeah, great question. I, I mean, a, a couple, but uh, one that that springs to mind is I, just this morning. I was uh, I was working with uh, a small uh, consulting business, and uh, we were talking about you know what what is it in the first place. So we were describing it as you know Chat GPT is essentially a tool that helps business people uh, augment um, and use technology to help them do the things they're already doing, but maybe faster. Uh, and maybe more accurately uh, and certainly more robustly. So the example was, and this is a, a consulting business, and they were going to, they were saying to me, look, I've got to go to, got to, go to talk to a client next week, and we need to talk to them about uh, this product area. And uh, I said, are you using, uh, are you using ChatGPT? And I said, no, I'm aware of it. And then we got into the conversation about what is it, and uh, we got online actually, quick Zoom call, and uh, we used my profile, and uh, the, we we took the product area uh, that their client wanted to talk about. Uh, we did a quick instruction into ChatGPT. We asked ChatGPT, can you give us a perspective on what we believe the future trends are that will affect this product? Um, and can can you construct a short one-page memo to explain what we believe that the client should do? Very simple instruction we gave to ChatGPT live online within about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. We started to see a kind of a one-page memo appear. And there was a little bit of a gasp um, because uh, uh, the client kind of said, wow, okay, that would have taken me probably a day to sit down, do some Googling, uh, see if I could do a pen picture, then try and get it into a Word document. We were very simply at the end able to cut and paste that into a Word document. But it wasn't the conclusion, Carl, it's a really important point. And I said at the start that these technologies should be used to augment and build value, right? But the augmentation piece is really important. We were able then to say, let's take that uh, one pager as a starting point And then now let's have a conversation about turning that into something very robust, but very relatable for this particular client. And Garvin, what are the core competencies of a digital business? Oh, great question. There are seven uh, that I I talk to to, to clients about. Uh, And it starts uh, with with thinking about the customer. We call it customer simplicity, right? The bottom line is uh, it's not digital. Uh, for digital sake, it's not about using technology for technology's sake. Let's go back to what I said right at the very start. This is about understanding what's the job the customer is trying to do. Who are they? Where are they in their life? You know, almost thinking of the customer strategy. Uh, what are they trying to achieve? And where are they trying to get to? 
Then the second piece we we think about when we're the competency we're looking at in 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 strategies that are digitally enabled is efficiency. And most people kind of jar and they call what do you mean efficiency? What do you mean by that? And I say, well, it's about simplicity. And then they say, what do you mean by that, Garvin? And I said, well, look, if we want to start investing in digital and technologies as a means to solve customer problems, we're going to have to find some capacity. And um, to find capacity. You have to find some efficiencies in your business. You have to simplify your business because if you don't do that, you run the risk and the danger of creating complexity in your business by trying to do what you're already doing and then try to do some more. And when you're trying to do some more on top of what you're already doing, a lot of businesses, and that's one of the big transformation lessons, is you grind to a halt and you're you're just creating, you know, you're building a a problem for the future. The third one is to start thinking about engagement. So how do we find the right way to talk to the right customer? customer at the right time. Is that in person or is it on the phone? Is it online? Is it on mobile? So thinking about what's the best way to engage the customer and then building your products and services, obviously, to reach the customer in that way. Fourth competency is around analytics. Really importantly, if you digitalize your services, you'll create a data footprint. If you create a data footprint, you can use things like generative AI to give you some intelligence about how you could make it better, how you could make it sharper and faster. The fifth one uh, competency is what we talk about, agile. So that's back to this adaptability. It's building a, a competency in the business so that you can test and learn and test and learn. So that's about taking small opportunities, uh, trying, uh, proving or failing, trying again, and doing that loop. The sixth competency is about innovation. That's about bravery. That's about in when you have this agile way of working, you know, taking small little increments. It's about stretching the boundaries of possibility, thinking about how do you uh, not just make what you have better, but how do you try new territories? And the seventh one, which is a little bit far out, and they go in this kind of sequence, is what we call being open. And this is the whole idea of in the world that's moving faster, when there's all these new technologies, is not to be a closed shop. So you can't do it all yourself. In fact, there's an opportunity around everybody right now to, you know, um, buy in technologies or buy in skills. And finally, Garvin, the rate of technological innovation and advancement is at an unprecedented level. So what can businesses do to stay on top of that? And what trends do you see coming down the track apart from AI? Yeah, there's there's uh, there's tons of them. I mean, one of one of the big trends uh, that are that is uh, that's out there, and I believe has to be fully embraced and and discovered is uh, what we what, you know virtual reality and augmented reality. Really seeing it take uh, life in the medical um, uh, professions, but also in contact centres, um, and this idea of using, um, I guess, um, a, a digital lens on the physical world to recreate. Uh, in a virtual way, you know what we thought about as the as the physical setting, but but doing it in a virtual way allows for experimentation, and we see a lot of um, 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 medical science uh, businesses actually digital twinning uh, patients or digital twinning um, uh, cells and digital twinning viruses and so on, so they, that they can experiment in a safe way. Uh, what's happening. Um, but back to your, you know, the first part of your question and just to close off. Now, uh, I use an exercise in, in the book uh, which we call future scoping. And uh, it's part of strategy as well, actually. It's a, it's a core part of it. And, and this is instead of thinking about starting from where you are today and looking forward and saying, well, where is the world going to go? Um, you actually leap out of that and you move forward into, say, 2030 and you start having a conversation and this is what we call future scoping about what will we, do we believe the world will look like in 2030. And we look through interesting lenses like how are how is society shaping, how are politics shaping, uh, what's the political landscape looking like. So we use these kind of lenses and then we create a hypothesis of maybe what the world could look like, you know, in that 2030 time frame. And then we have a conversation with ourselves about what do we believe that our role or our place in that 2030 looks like. And then we have a conversation about stepping back from 2030 and that desired place we want to have in that hypothesised world and saying what would take us to get there. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Garvin Callan from 101 and the author of Digital Business Strategy. And I'd like to thank Garvin for sharing his insights into what SMEs need to consider when developing their digital strategy. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.